Hi, Farouk here at DirectUp. I hope you're having a good day so far and your FE exam prep is going just fine. Remember, always, always take your breaks. Take plenty of breaks, do not overdo it, and know your limits. The goal is to have lots of breaks and also at the same time, maintain consistency. You wanna stay consistent and you wanna gradually build those consistent study habits, which do take time if you're just starting out. It may take you maybe three weeks, two weeks. So it takes time to build these learning or studying habits, but please make sure to go at your own pace, slow and steady, take plenty of breaks, make time for these breaks, and you should be on the right track. Let's talk about problem solving when it comes to the FE exam. So we know for this exam, it's not just plug and chuck. So we're not just gonna grab an equation, use that and solve a question and get the answer. We have to have a problem solving approach and we have to develop our own problem solving approach. In fact, this is what students mainly struggle with when solving FE type problems is developing and trusting their own problem solving approach to solve all kinds of FE problems. Students struggling with solving FE type problems may say things like this. So one student might say, I don't know where to even start. Another student might say, you make it look so easy when you do it. And lastly, one student might say, if I only knew which equation to apply, I can solve the problem. These statements indicate that students do indeed have a problem solving approach that they're relying on to solve FE type problems. But unfortunately, it's the wrong type of approach. So this is the wrong approach because it often goes something like this. So let's say a student sees a FE problem statement and they read it and skip important parts. Maybe they read it too fast. So they take that problem statement for granted. That problem statement is so important, especially in the initial steps in the initial process or solution. So they skip that, maybe skip parts, don't write what they're given, or maybe they don't know the big picture, what they're really trying to find. So that's that. Then often a student may just dive into an equation too early. Just dive and write an equation. So they go in the handbook, write the equation, then they try to their best to get that solution, start that solution. And often using this approach doesn't really help us because the FE exam is not just in the, just testing how to plug in chug equations. We need to have an approach. We need to have an approach and know the fundamental concept. And a lot of questions are not just solved by equations. The theory and the fundamental unit conversions, fundamental concepts, always come before applying these equations. So this student might use the equation, they make it stuck halfway or maybe at the beginning, then maybe they have the same habit of using the same, another equation in the handbook. So they, they get that equation and they still get stuck. They're still stuck and ultimately they get flustered, fl frustrated, they get lost and at the end, they just give up. So what's really happening here? Mainly students are skipping that very important planning step. Rather, they're just diving into the solution too early, using equations, and taking that problem statement for granted. They're not reading it slow, they're not noting what they're given, and they're not planning their overall solution. This planning step is so important because you're literally planning out your solution. So you look at that problem statement, you know what you are given, you really know and have a good idea what you're given, what you wanna find, and you have a big picture idea of that problem statement. Then you get into planning. You get into planning by figuring out, is it an equation that I'm trying to use in the FE handbook? Or maybe a lot of the time, it's not an equation. It's an approach. It's a problem solving approach that you have to learn as you solve lots of practice questions. Okay, you're probably asking, how do I do this? How do I plan out my solution? How do I become a better problem solver? And how do I develop that problem solving approach that will ensure I'm solving these FE problems correctly. First of all, there's no shortcuts. It takes lots of practice. We have to do lots of practice, but it's gonna be a certain type of practice. It's gonna be deliberate, active practice. We're not just gonna memorize solutions. We're not just gonna look at solutions, write steps down without really knowing why we're doing each step. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna avoid these bad, 
old habits and build and relearn good habits, good study habits to ultimately develop our problem solving approach. And to do that, I'm gonna give you some tips to become a problem solver. Tip number one, get fluent with those fundamental math skills. Namely, it's going to be the algebra, the trigonometry, and the geometry. Because we know all of these tie into almost all the topics covered on the epi exam. It's very important, it's very fundamental, so we have to be comfortable with that fundamental math skills. Namely, it's going to be that algebra. That's gonna be the most important. I know in my course, in my civil FP review course, I do have a quick crash course where I'm teaching my students fundamental algebra. We're not gonna to go too crazy, not expert level, just the basics. We wanna bring that back. We wanna bring back how to solve for an unknown, how to manipulate algebra equations. This is what we're focused on. So that's what I teach in this quick crash course before we dive into the first FE section, the mathematics section. So get fluent with your basic algebra. Tip number two, cover fundamental concepts, definitions, and theory before solving problems. Don't just solve problems without covering fundamental concepts, theory, definitions, and all of that. So you can do this in a form of lesson material where you're reading over slides, conceptual notes, and so on. Or maybe you're watching lecture videos that give you these notes and they cover these fundamental concepts. So this is very important and I do challenge you to build your own flashcards for definitions and for these concepts. The FE exam loves to test concepts nowadays. And also this further ensures that we have a fundamental understanding of the equations that we're gonna apply. So that fundamental understanding is gonna reinforce the equations and it's just gonna build our overall understanding. Tip number three, practice lots of problems, but make sure you do the basic ones first. You don't wanna do the hard ones too early. You wanna gradually build your problem solving, build your skills by doing the basic problems first. And if you're running into the issue where you're seeing a lot of hard problems or problems that have an excessive solution or a solution that's just too long, I suggest that you skip it. Skip it because we know the epi exam is testing the fundamentals. The questions are probably two to three steps maximum. You want to focus on the basics and after you're comfortable with that, you can challenge yourself with the harder problems. Tip number four, practice drawing simple, neat label diagrams. So you might be thinking, this exam is timed. I don't have time to draw these. That's no excuse. Imagine this, when we're looking at statics, mechanics and materials, dynamics, even fluids, like water pressure and all of that, we have to visualize what's happening. And for statics, imagine that free body diagram. If you have that drawn incorrectly, in that planning stage, your solution is gonna be wrong. So in the initial planning stage, you have to draw these neat, clear diagrams. At the beginning, it's gonna be messy if you're not used to it. That's fine. Practice, practice drawing these diagrams. Take it slow if you have to, and don't take this for granted. So draw these diagrams, practice, takes lots of practice, but you are gonna get better at it the more you do it. Tip number five, struggle through practice problems and don't look at the solution too early. So you do wanna struggle through practice problems. That's part of learning. That's the best kind of learning, struggling and making lots of mistakes. So you will have that stage where you're struggling through a practice problem and that's where you're thinking about concepts, you're thinking about equations to use, you're thinking about what you learned in the past. Essentially, you're recalling stuff you learned in the past from the previous section or from your notes or from the practice problems you've already done. That's good, go through that struggle stage. But then if you're still stuck after let's say a long time and you're just stuck and there's no way to get unstuck, Use the solution, that's why it's there. You need expert work solutions that show you the assumptions, show you each step, so make use of that solution. But do not just look at it and think, okay, I looked at this, it makes sense, let me move on to the next practice problem. Big no-no, don't just do that, you wanna 
actually resolve it. Don't just look at the solution and assume that you looked at it, it makes sense to you. Because a lot of the times from my experience, when I try to solve it on my own again, it's still a struggle. I still have a hard time, but that solution helped me get unstuck. So always challenge yourself to resolve that same practice problem in a way that makes sense to you. Tip number six, when you're confused, identify what's confusing you, note it down, then ask questions. So we know the goal when we're preparing and studying for this FE exam is to look over the lesson material covered definitions, concepts, theory, and also most importantly, dive into practice problems, do lots of practice problems. And we wanna, at the end, understand the practice problems and have a good understanding of the fundamental concepts and theory. So we know with any type of understanding or learning, there's always gonna be confusion but we can never just brush that aside. So anytime we get confused, don't just go into the next practice question. Don't do that too often, avoid that bad habit. Note down what's confusing you, really identify it. Maybe it's the problem statement, maybe it's like the wording, definitions, or you just don't, un don't understand the overall picture or maybe what you're trying to find from that problem statement. Maybe it's the equation that's confusing you. Certain terms, variables, maybe it's the units. So you wanna see what's really confusing you, identify it, then you wanna ask lots of questions. Questions are good. There's no stupid question. Every question is a good question. Ask lots of questions. I know with my students, we're always interacting, answering questions, asking questions. I get their questions, and maybe sometimes I get my own questions from their questions. So it's a natural process to ask lots of questions. Also, nowadays, if you have questions, Google answers a lot of these, right? We can just put a Google search, maybe it's a definition, or maybe it's a solution. There's a lot of solutions online, the goal is to have a lot of questions because that ensures you're really learning and you're reinforcing your understanding. Tip number seven, when you make silly mistakes, don't just do this. So you make a silly mistake, you're like, crap, I made a silly mistake, I'll probably avoid it next time. It's just a silly mistake. Do not do that. These silly mistakes are not so silly, especially when they add up and especially when you're doing them time after time. So note down these silly mistakes, know them specifically and identify them. And you can do this by a note log, a note log or sheet of paper, multiple papers if you need to of these silly mistakes. Also, you can do this on the same practice problems that you have printed. So note these down. These may be unit conversions, simple ones. Maybe you forgot to square a term, Maybe you made a silly mistake in the calculator. So these are not so silly if they happen often. So then your challenge for that same practice problem or for future practice problems is to avoid that same silly mistake. And please, if you have to slow it down, slow it down, always slow it down. Pace yourself, write everything, draw that clear, neat diagram. Then over time, you're gonna increase your speed so long as you're not making these silly mistakes. These seven problem solving tips will not always guarantee that you're gonna get the right solution. Cause as we said, it takes lots of practice, the right kind of practice. And it also takes unlearning bad study habits and learning good study habits. And lastly, it takes your commitment, it takes your commitment to be in control of your FE exam prep to practice these tips, to practice new strategies, and to build your problem solving skills. So as a problem solver, you will build these skills, you will apply them to the FE, to the PE, and you will carry them throughout your whole life. So keep on building those problem solving skills, reflect on these tips, and apply it to that next practice problem.